So in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about product photography. So I have spoken about product photography on this channel before. Um, a couple months ago, we did a product photography at home thing and I went through how to set up kind of like a really basic DIY setup using things you might have at home and um, how to edit that as well. But in today's video, I want to talk to you guys more specifically about how to choose props, how to work with props, how to create a set and style your product photography. So before this video, I actually did a little bit of a prop haul, I guess you'd call it. Um, I went to Ikea a couple of weeks ago, just before the country shut down um, for the second time. And I bought a few different items and I also ordered some stuff online as well to show you guys. So firstly, I wanted to talk to you guys about how we create a set in product photography and how we choose the props to complement that. So the product that we take a photo of in product photography is often referred to as the hero prop or the hero object or subject. But this is a prop. But let's imagine we were styling a shoot around this as the hero product. So what do you think about? What kind of things do you want to think about? So for me, I kind of think about product photography in one of two ways. Am I making quite a literal set? So am I, you know, choosing props that relate really specifically to the hero object and thinking about how I might be able to tell a story or a narrative with those props? Or am I choosing props based on the aesthetic value? So, you know, what it looks like and how pretty a picture it makes. Or thirdly, I guess, are you trying to combine a bit of both? Ideally, you want to be combining both, but sometimes, depending on the product, depending on the brief, that's going to change. So when I'm choosing my props, I want to think about textures. I want to think about how it relates to the hero subject and I want to think about colours. So with that in mind I'm going to talk you through some of the props that I bought from Ikea. So firstly I'm going to talk about this and its sister items since you already saw it. I honestly am not really sure what these are. If you are familiar with Ikea you know that there's like a little bargain buy section at the end and I picked these up mainly because of the colours like how the block geometrical shapes and the block colours work um, together. I thought they might look interesting with specific products. I didn't expect them to have these little things on them. It wasn't very apparent in the packet. But yeah, like I said, I chose these for their geometric form and their bold colours. Next up, I bought a set of little cork coasters and I think they were like £2 for, each, for like two, so four pound or something. So there were actually two reasons that I bought these court coasters. One being the texture. It's a really nice texture. Um, and texture is really important when we're working with products because it can create like another dimension to the product. So whereas on this, this is quite flat, there's not really much of a texture apart from the, the sheen, the shine that you are seeing. It's not necessarily gonna create that extra layer if you have a similar product, a product with a similar texture. I also like how round they are, in case you haven't caught the theme yet, I really like geometric shapes. Another great bonus thing is that they can stack and we can layer them, which can, which can also create some really interesting shapes. Next up, similar kind of thing, we've got this wooden board. This is quite small, it's quite a good size for product photography. And um, again, we're looking at the texture that this creates within the image. And similarly to the cork boards, not only does it provide a little bit of texture, but it's great for layering. Layering is something we want to utilize in product photography. Next up, I bought these two glass containers. Um, I have got things in them now, and you'll see why when you see the behind the scenes. But yeah, these glass containers, I thought would be kind of interesting um, to create reflections from glass is a really good like technique to use and also to store things and contain things. I don't know, even though I saw them in person when I bought them, they're bigger than I anticipated. When you put them next to a product, they do look quite big. So I had initially thought, right, I'll buy two to use them together, but they're a little bit big to use together. So I've kind of just been using them one at a time. 
Similar to these little geometric things, I also bought this and I don't know what it is. Again, it's from the bargain buy section, but I bought it for its geometric shape. Final thing I bought from Ikea was this. The reason I liked it was because it's so many things in one. It is just like a container, like for your bathroom or something like that. Although I think I'm gonna store like my film in it, I don't know. But the great thing about it is within this one product, we've got a ton of textures, we've got a ton of layers um, and we've got a ton of colors. So obviously, if you can see, this is a mirror. We can use it um, as a reflector surface. We can use it as, you know, a blank surface really, as long as you're reflecting like a, like how we're reflecting the light in that. We can also use it as literally a reflector. You see how we're getting the light on my face. And the great thing about this as well is that if you flip over, there is no mirror. So that is the lid of the container, it's the top layer. The second layer is just a really simple, like white, it's kind of like marble, I guess, um, drawer. Then it, we've got a round one as well. Again, love the geometric shapes. Something that is a bit annoying with these are these like little, um, like bridges, but you know, we can make those work with certain things. Even use them as intended as like bathroom trays when you're trying to create a bathroom-esque kind of scene. And then the main box um, again. And if you flip it over, other than the Ikea little stamp here, that's a pretty nice surface. And that's nothing Photoshop can't remove if needs be. And then not from Ikea, but online, I bought some other little bits, such as the beads in this tub. Actually, a funny story is that, it's not actually that funny, it's actually kind of annoying. Um, I ordered some of these to my flat and someone stole them. So these are the second, lot of beads I bought. Whoever stole my post and just got beads, I hope you're really happy. And I got this string, which I really like. Um, I also use it for like client gifts. Um, I think it's really rustic and like kind of, it's a nice little decoration thing. And with this, I got some pegs as well. So these kind of things like the beads and the pegs and the string, I'd say are more like accents than they are props. We're kind of like just decorating the scene with them rather than using them to create um, layers and levels and stuff like that it's just like a little bonus accent of color of texture there are a lot of random items here but that's what i wanted to kind of do is pick really random things and try and create scenes where we could use them so without further ado we will get through to the behind the scenes and you guys can see what i ended up doing with these items <laughs>
a little bit of a strange video, a bit more experimental than my other things and a lot more or less planned, I should say. Um, I hope you guys were able to see how I go about kind of using props and choosing them and creating scenes. It was kind of just like a fun little video to kind of experiment with all these random items. But I do hope that you guys got some sort of value from them. If you haven't already checked out my other product photography videos, I will link them somewhere on the screen and I will link them in the description as well. So please do head over and check those out. I will try my best to link all the items that I use in this video in the description below. But as ever, if you did enjoy this video and you want to see more like it, then please give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.